Want to know one of the most well put together Jello films? I'd say, what have you done to Solange? Let's review. <laughs> what have you done to Solange stars Fabio Testi, Christina Galbo, Camille Keaton, and is directed by Massimo Dalamano. What's up, guys? First off, if you don't have a Shutter subscription, what are you doing with your life if you love horror? Because, oh my God, there's just so much content. Not getting paid by Shutter, by the way. I'm just serious. If the well has run dry and I need content uh, to watch, then I go to Shutter because, like I said, there's just, you can't keep up with it all. And uh, one thing I like to do, this is kind of my warm blanket, is I go to their Italian horror playlist or their Jallo playlist. And uh, they just have so many uh, great films from like the early 70s uh, in there. And some of them in the 80s too. But uh, one that was on my watch list, because I created like a, a playlist of movies that I want to watch on there. But one was, what have you done to Solange? And funny enough, the thing that sparked my interest in this movie was I recently reviewed I Spit on Your Grave with Camille Keaton. And, uh, you know, doing my research on that movie, I found out that she was actually in this movie. Way back in 1972, you know, some six years before. So that sparked my interest. And uh, she does have a prominent role. Her name is Solange in this movie. She is the title character. She does not say a word, and we'll get into that. But uh, yeah, just really interesting. And also, let me just say, this is an older movie. I, I'm probably going to be talking about some spoilers. I'm not going to tell you who the actual killer is, because this is a Jallo movie. Jallos are pretty much slasher movies except the difference is they're more uh, mystery driven and they usually have a killer that's wearing like a um, a black trench coat with with you know like a black hat just a black figure kind of like the man in black in, in halloween 5. some people say halloween 5 is the jallo uh movie of the franchise I told you i'd get the word halloween in this review but this movie starts off uh you got this teacher enrico and he is having an affair with one of his students and they're in this boat, in this, this nice riverbank. And, uh, you know, while they're in the process of making out, uh, this student, Elizabeth, she notices a murder right in front of her. Let me just say, the way that he kills this student, and there's a couple of killings like this throughout the movie, is uh, not for the squeamish, okay? And it is a plot point in the movie. It's not just for the sake of, you know, gratuitous violence. It does fit into the story, but let's just say that he literally stabs her in her privates, okay? And that ties into the, the reveal at the end of the movie. But it's pretty gnarly. But this movie's weird because if I say that, you would automatically think that this is a certain type of movie. Just almost like Grindhouse, you know, just dirty, nasty type. But no, it's directed in such a professional manner. And I'd say out of all the Jellos, I'm not saying it has the most style, but there is definitely... Uh, some panache with the way the camera's used in this movie. Uh, you're going to see all those tropes of Italian horror that we always see, like the, the, the quick zoom-ins with the camera and all that. But there's a lot of creativity throughout, too. But really, this movie, it's more of a mystery. It's not about the kills. It's not uh, leaning on the kills. I just reviewed Visiting Hours, which is also more of a mystery-driven type of movie. Even though we know who the killer is, it's not about the kills. You know, that was more of like a, a character study of the killer itself. Uh, this isn't that, but they spend more time on the mystery and finding out who the killer is. And really, they focus a lot on Enrico, the, the teacher. He is one of the witnesses, but he can't really tell, uh, especially his wife, because uh, he's having an affair. And so that ties into the plot, uh, and it just adds more tension along the way. Now, Camille Keaton, uh, let's get right into her part in this movie because she does play Solange. She's this character that is mute. And this is where we're getting into spoilers, okay? She was part of this group of schoolgirls who were just, you know, getting into trouble, having sex, partying, all this stuff. And then she ends up getting pregnant. And so they force her to get an abortion. And it was so traumatic to her because it was like against her will that she kind of went mad. And after that, she became a mute. You know, it messed her up in the head. And we don't even see her until like later in the movie, like like the middle. And there's this question mark on her the whole time. Now there's some strong characters in here too, especially uh, Enrico and Elizabeth. Elizabeth really reminded me of like Rose Byrne. She looks like Rose Byrne, but uh, 
Christina Galbo does a really fantastic job in this movie. You know, she plays the part of this naive teenager to a T. And she's caught right in the middle of this whole thing. So, obviously, she's really stressed out. And then there's this scene in the middle of the movie where you see the killer's point of view. And it looks very chaotic. And he's going into Enrico's room. And he drowns her while she's, uh, you know, taking a bath. It's a very unique scene because it's not like every drowning scene we see. You know, I like how they focused on the POV. Just a one-take shot. And, you know, we see the killer coming in the room and the shot doesn't cut until after she's dead. And that's one thing I love about Jello films. There's always something in these movies that is a stylistic choice, you know, that sets it apart from like normal Hollywood movies. And I think that's why I love Jello films so much. They're unpredictable. There's always something around the corner that you don't expect. They're also known because this is these are European films, so they're a lot more freeform in terms of like nudity and 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 the death scenes uh, often are more bloody. Not that this movie uh, depends on blood that much, but there's definitely some violent scenes and really just the nature of the killings in this movie. Uh, you got this one character, Janet, who she's coming out of uh, the house and she's literally dragged into this car and taken out into the woods, clothes ripped off, and she is, you know, murdered in the fashion that I just told you. And again, that's just a normal trope of Italian horror films. You know, they don't hold back whatsoever. But the character in Rico is really interesting too because this is a guy who is obviously doing a horrible thing, having an affair on his wife, but he's able to convey a performance that makes you somehow care about the character. And, and you know, you're kind of like on his side throughout, even though what he did was really bad. But I think what makes it work is that uh, once he gets knee deep into this thing, you can tell that he kind of feels bad for what's going on. So he does have a little bit of a conscience and he's got one hell of a beard, okay? I'm gonna say that, it's almost like an Abe Lincoln beard. Oh, and last thing I gotta talk about is that fantastic score by Ennio Morricone. And I think if you have a Morricone score, then it's going to give you a leg up. And I think that's part of what makes this movie kind of, you know, in the cream of the crop of Jalo films. Because that score is just beautiful all the way through. And there's a lot of variety in the score. There's some tense moments in there. Uh, but there's this really beautiful music that uh, Elizabeth would play when she would come over to Enrico's room. You know, it was kind of like their song throughout the movie, but uh, just beautiful stuff. And everybody knows Enrico Morricone, just a freaking master composer. And, uh, you know, like people like Tarantino have constantly praised his work. You know, he even used him in The Hateful Eight. And of course his work in The Thing, just a lot of variety in his scores. Now, as far as any cons, um, I will say that some people might feel that there are some dry spots. I didn't feel that because I was focused on the story and this is one of those like building blocks type movies that, you know, puts the plot together along the way, you know, picks up the breadcrumbs. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Definitely giving it a purchase worthy. It's a great Jallo film. I would probably rank it like in the top 10 Jallo films of all time. And I think it stands up today. So anyway, guys, have you seen What Have You Done to Salons? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't, definitely check this movie out. Uh, it's on Shutter. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays. We do free for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dumb out. <laughs>